What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about a sub base, particularly in kind of more minimal tech techno kind of genres. So I recently put out a video about growls, how to synthesize those and the uh, backtrack that I used. I got quite a few questions on how I did the bass, uh, particularly the sub bass. There's something particularly interesting about how I synthesized the kick and the subs for that. I want to show you uh, what I think is interesting about that. And then I want to show you how to actually uh, go about creating something like that for yourself from scratch. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so here I've got the track which I used as the backtrack for that particular video. And I've loaded up um, an oscilloscope here, which is gonna show us the relationship between the kick and the sub bass. One thing that you'll notice here that is pretty interesting is it kind of seems like the kick has a continuous tail that turns into the sub bass. And so one of the comments that I got was um, somebody commenting about how they found it particularly difficult to kind of differentiate where the tail of the kick ended and where the uh, actual sub bass started. And I guess that's the trick that I was kind of trying to employ when I was producing the track because I wanted to feel like the kick was this kind of a long tail that turned into the bass as opposed to a kind of more jagged sound. Does that make sense? So the important thing to take into account when you want to do these kind of really tight kick and sub relationships is phase. So what we want to do is we want to synthesize the kick so that the tail of the kick is in phase with the bass when it starts. So I'll go about explaining exactly what all of that means. Here we have what looks like the sum of the kick and the subs, but we can also visualize the kicks and the subs separately like this. And then what we can do is we can overlay them. So now what we can do is we can actually visualize each of these independently. So here I'll assign a different color for each one. So let's say red for the base, yellow for the kick. And if we zoom in here, you'll see that the kick is actually really short. The base starts at the same phase cycle and kind of just carries on like that. And that's what creates that kind of like, uh, what feels like a never ending sine wave that turns from the kick's tail into the sub. So how do we actually go about creating something like this? Uh, in fact, actually I wanna show you um, how short the kick actually is because it doesn't sound that way, you know? Often with this kind of thing, you want a kick that sounds very big and bassy, but when you do that, it starts to introduce all sorts of other issues in terms of like mixing it with the sub bass and that kind of thing. So I chose to go with a very short kick and to kind of fill the gap with the sub. Another trick also, sometimes if you don't hear the subs of a track too well, maybe it's like your monitoring system or something like that, you can add a distortion onto the group and that just makes the relationship a lot more audible. So when there's mistakes, you'll kind of like really hear it being pronounced. So with the distortion, we'll obviously be able to hear a lot more easier what's happening, but it's not, it's not the final result. Do you know what I mean? We're just using this to pronounce the low end. Do you hear how it's got that groove? Burr, burr, da, burr, burr, da, da, burr. So like it's got that groove and that's just the sub and the kick, okay? So I'm kind of like, I believe that like if your track has a good kick and a good sub and it's got that groove, it doesn't really matter what you put on top of it. I mean, of course, um, you know, a, a bad sound will sound bad or whatever the case is, but like as long as the groove is there, the kick and sub sound good, they have a good kind of like uh, mix together, then I would say like 50, percent or more of your production work is done then the rest is just like writing cool sounds on top of that do you know what i mean so just nail this and the rest of the, the the track will start to kind of come together do you know what i mean so okay let's start from scratch i'm going to uh remove this from the track for now uh so let's just go and mute this so now we have nothing but the uh rest of the track and we're going to go ahead and start creating this from scratch so i used kick 2 which is a plugin from sonic academy i'm sure you are familiar with this so by default you'll notice that the length is actually quite long you can actually see it takes up one two three almost a whole bar here uh let's actually put in put it into a group and then we can put in some notes over here so we can start triggering
Okay, so first thing that I'll usually do is turn off these effects here, the drive, the distortion, the EQ, and that kind of stuff. To give us a kind of more clean sound, we can add those later on if we need. Um, I'll also mute the click so that we're only hearing the kind of uh, sine wave. We can add the click later on if we need more transient. So the trick here is to just set this length down to like, till you can see uh, somewhere like where the tail kind of like teeters off at the first 16th note. Something like this. Already the kick sounds nice and tight. Compared to the default that we had, it already sounds much, much better. Okay, so let's just fine tune this a little bit further. Okay, that's good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna identify what the root note of the track is. So I think it was in F, yeah. So because we're writing this track in F and we wanna have that solid phase relationship between the kick and the sub, it will be a good idea to put these tail uh, nodes here onto F. So both of these final ones onto F. So that means it's gonna do this pitch cycle. Uh, it's gonna envelope this pitch like this downwards and it's gonna land on F and then it's gonna be static. Does that make sense? So sometimes now I'll go in and, and fine tune these settings over here. Maybe we wanna give it a little bit more of a pitch sweep, but let's do that while we're listening to the sound. Okay, that sounds good. So now we can go and start fine tuning the amplitude. So you'll notice by default, the transient is actually all the way down. And it's because the default patch actually uses a click over here in place of the, the transient. So depending on how you wanna design the sound, if you want some, some synthesized click, you can turn this first note up a bit. Although I find that sometimes that gets a bit too clicky. So what I'll do is I'll usually just move this node back a little bit. Do you hear how much difference just that little adjustment makes to the sound? Okay, so now what we can do is we can go to the clicks and we can start to uh, listen to what these sound like. So I wanna solo the click so I can hear just the click. And what we can do is we can actually click this, click view. And what this does is this allows us to actually visualize here the waveform of the click. So we'll notice that there's actually quite a bit of sine wave here that overlays the actual sine wave from our synthesizer. So if we go to click, we can actually fine tune this envelope of the click using this envelope over here. So if we actually go back to this original, we can see exactly where the waveform kind of ends, and that might be where we want to end that click. Does that make sense? And then we can cycle through different clicks to kind of see which one sounds the best. This one sounds kind of nice. It's got that tight kind of mid top end. Uh, let's enable the sign again. Okay, that's already sounding pretty sweet. I actually want to dial back this transient of the sign a little bit. And let's maybe give this a little bit of envelope here at the beginning. Sometimes it sounds a bit tighter if you just remove a little bit of that transient. And remember that this uh, interface is nonlinear. So it always looks more drastic than it actually is. Okay, so we can leave the fine tuning uh, of the kick till a uh, later stage. So I guess this is kind of more just uh, an explanation. Now what we wanna do is we wanna start doing the subs. So what I can do here is add an instance of Vital. And so usually with this kind of thing, I actually end up doing two synths with the sub and I'll explain why. So here I just wanna group these and we'll call this group subs so that all the subs are gonna be in, the, in a single group. So here, what we can do is we can put the sidechain that we're gonna use 
onto the group channel. So you can use LFO tool for this, but I've basically recreated like a LFO tool type of thing with Snap Heap, just using a simple gain module. But I mean, there's various different ways that you can do this. So what I wanna do is just carve out some space for the kick. And that way, if we trigger a bass note on the kick every time, it's going to give it space, right? And so, let's look at the at an oscilloscope to make sure we can uh, see exactly what's happening here. So you see how the bass has that space in the beginning here for the kick. Okay, so now what we can do is we can tune this to the root note. So I usually just transpose it by whatever the amount of keys that we need to transpose up to the root note. So in this case, it's F, so it's plus five. And then let's go down an octave. Okay, so now let's set this to a uh, basic shapes sine wave and let's turn the phase randomization to zero. And so now we'll see that it's just giving us a kind of basic shape sine wave over here. So I wanna put a oscilloscope onto this kick as well. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna make the uh, side chain here a bit more drastic. So we wanna come in from zero and sweep up a lot quicker. Something like this. Cool, so now we can kind of visualize that sine wave a lot easier. In fact, we can turn it off and line it up here where I think it's already lined up. If it's not, what I usually go in to do is go into kick two and adjust this curve. Because if you adjust this curve, you can see it changes the phase of the tail. I'm just gonna undo that because it's already perfect, it seems, which is really cool. Or you can go into vital and actually change the phase of the synth. Although I find that the phase of the bass is very audible, whereas if you just sweep that tail a little bit, it doesn't actually change the transient of any sound too much. Okay, so now I wanna talk about uh, why phase is actually very important for this kind of thing. Um, if we click sum, you'll notice now because the phase relationship of these two sine waves is the same, it's a continuous sine wave that sweeps from the tail of the kick into the sub, right? But if for example, in Vital we had uh, a random phase retrigger on, right? So every note would be a different phase. See here how every bar would be basically like a different, a different shape over here. Sometimes it's louder, sometimes it dips down over here. You see, so sometimes it'll be like, ooh, whoop, ooh, whoop. Sometimes it'll just be like, doof. But it's because sometimes those phases align, sometimes they don't, and sometimes they go in reverse. And so what happens when a phase is completely in reverse to another phase is it cancels that sound out. So sometimes you'll even have a dip completely to zero. And so you'll have this groove that kind of changes without stability throughout the track. And so instead of having this, I would say set the phase to zero, align it perfectly, and then you can create your own groove with a LFO tool or sidechain or something like that, right? See how clean that is. It's the same response every single time. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so now is when we start creating the actual groove, right? Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna gain match these a bit. Okay, so like I said, remember if we're having trouble hearing the groove, we can just add something like a distortion to be able to really hear that kind of sound effect, it really like accentuates the sound of that groove, do you know what I mean? But like I said, this is not the default sound. We're not gonna actually use this distortion as the sound. Unless you want to make Gabba, of course. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go into the actual 
a base groove. I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller over here. Um, and now we can start to create these kind of grooves. So here, I wanna talk about why I use two separate base uh, sub channels. One will be for the initial kick hit and one will be for the aux hits, stuff that happens like in between the bars. So what I'll do here is I'll, pro I'll control D this so that it's now a duplicate of that patch. And then here we can go in and change to like a different groove, right? But now notice how this is gonna be super loud compared to the other one because it's being play, it's not being uh, cut off by any side chain or anything like that. It's playing at a spot where there's no kicks. We maybe don't notice it as much because the distortion kind of like just mushes everything together in terms of dynamics. But notice how that this one is often a lot louder because there's no kind of side chain or anything happening here. So we can turn this one down a little bit just to compensate a little bit for that. And so now we can start experimenting with like a different groove. For example, maybe here, we can do like uh, two short ones. And then maybe here we can do like a long one. We can also perhaps change the note of this one. So for example, because this one has that phase relationship, we don't wanna change the notes that are in the first, let's say two sixteenths. We can sometimes this one a little bit, but we don't wanna do too much kind of groove notes in, in this bass because this is the on kick bass, right? The off kick bass, we can do some variations here. For example, like moving the notes up or down or whatever the case is. And doing these slight variations can start to develop into more of a full groove that can complement like other instruments in the track. So for example, that's actually how I came up with the mid bass in the original example is some of the notes were kind of like the, it's actually the third, not the second in the scale, but regardless, um, we can actually try that out as well. Um, so instead of the plus one, let's try the plus three as well. That's cool, but I actually prefer this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually create a mid bass as well. We might as well, because we're here. So in this example, how I did it was actually using a plugin called Fosion, which is a replica uh, or a plugin emulation of a, a TB303, which is a legendary kind of bass synthesizer or old school techno and stuff like that. And the reason that it's really cool is just super simple to get that sound. It kind of starts off with the sound, you know? That's the sound we're looking for, right? So let's go ahead and transpose this to the key of the track, which was plus five. Yeah, what I wanna do is put in a little bit of EQ to remove some of the low end because we're actually just adding it with that sine wave anyway. Cool. And then here, let's identify where in the bar those kind of accent off beats are.
Cool. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. Let me know if you like these kind of more minimal tech type of stuff. I know I'm not used to doing this stuff on my channel, but you know, I think it's all usable in dance music at the end of the day. So anyway, let me know what you think. See you guys next time. Cheers.